Okay, this is Jesse Steele with Eastern Sierra Now, and we are talking with Manuel Ruiz, who is a filmmaker from the area and has a short film that is premiering. Is it premiering? This is the first time uh, it's going to yes, it Yeah, be. yeah, awesome. Premiering at the Lone Pine Film Festival, right? That's correct, yes. Cool. When is the festival? Uh, so the, the uh, it'll be premiering October 9th uh, during the film festival. The film festival is actually from October 6th through October 10th. And uh, yes, it will be October 9th at 2.30 p.m. at the um, Museum of Western Film History. Oh, cool. In their little theater they have there? Yeah, exactly. That's pretty awesome. Um, do you know how many short films are going to premiere during that time? Um, I believe a total of five. Oh, cool. Is, are they all local, or they're just mostly shot around here, or how does that go? No, I believe uh, mine might be the only local, sh- uh, or one made by a local. Um, the rest of them are people from, from what I understand, all around the world. Um, the only connection is that they were all shot in Lone Pine, or the Owens Valley, uh, to that, uh, for that matter. And um, But yeah, no, mine will uh, be the only one that was actually made by someone from the area. Oh, that's cool. Well, since we're since we're here, why don't we talk about it, Manny? <laughs> what, yeah, let's do that. What's the uh, what's the name of your movie and and what's it about? Why you know give your uh, your elevator pitch here, man. Yeah, so it's called All Else Fells, um, and it's about a con man, a very unsuccessful one. Gets um, he's trying to scam disability, gets denied, and he contemplates how's he gonna be able to support him and his wife. Uh, who's the only one who works honestly between the two of them um and in their town it's hiking season and anyone from the old valley can know understand what that's like and uh so he decides well you know these campers and hikers they have cash on them uh and why don't i go and rob them (laughs) you know what what can go wrong well it's a cautionary tale and it's to basically show you know somebody in dire straits not thinking right and just you know, reacting before thinking, if you will. So it's it, it's a pretty good, you know, like I said, it's a thriller, suspense, crime, a little flat comedy thrown in there for good measure. Um, but it's and it's one of those things where uh, underneath the surface, I think it can be kind of a relatable story. You know, people, somebody, what <laughs> maybe not the conning people, but being denied disability and wondering how the hell am I gonna, what am I gonna do now? I'm I need this money. I can't work. I can't do anything. Hence the title, All Else Fells. This guy thinks this is his last resort when really it's not. He's just not thinking straight. We've all been there, especially coming through quarantine. <laughs> did you write this yeah. based on quarantine or did this? Did you do this before? No, no. This actually came way before uh, quarantine. Um, in fact, we shot this uh, February of 2020, so literally like just before uh, this little apocalypse happened and um, no, no that was never a thought it was just like uh, seeing you know some friends some family members going through their struggles of uh, of disability and then blending the whole uh, uh, seeing you know hikers in town I used to work in a motel and when the hikers would come in they would have their little baggies full of cash and I'd just be like hey don't be flashing that kind of cheese around your belt and uh but then also then a lover of crime movies i kind of thought oh wouldn't that be interesting uh these poor schmutz in the middle of nowhere somebody rolls up on him but then i just want to add that almost comedic where this guy is just a recipe for disaster the the, the uh, lead character the one who goes to rob them so i kind of thought okay i don't want to be a badass going out there and taking care of business i want it to almost be like oh boy jerry lewis is cast in a <laughs> really, really strong. I'm, I'm sure I turned my own horn there, but it is also in a Coen Brothers movie. Let's see how this ends up. So if there's a little like mixing, blending different genres and different styles into one, is kind of like where that all came. It's just kind of adding the different recipes into the stew, if you will. That makes a lot of sense, and you know, and it's kind of cool to do the uh, the homage to other films like you're talking about, and different directors that have inspired you. Um, uh, speaking of, what are some directors that have inspired you and, and your taste to kind of, you know, what what would I expect if I went to see one of your movies? Oh, well, um, <clears throat> uh, definitely uh, Quentin Tarantino is a huge influence on myself and uh, not even just this piece in general. Anything I pretty much do, uh, you can see a little bit of that influence in there. Um, this story in particular, uh, I guess many of my uh, – inspirations as far as filming goes definitely worked its way into influencing this story uh 
like Coen Brothers plays a big part. Specifically, what's funny is the robbery scene, when I first wrote, like, put pen to paper for the script, which was, like, years ago, I was going to have it be in a diner, not a not a uh, um, campsite, and that was influenced by uh, an episode of the Fargo TV show. And yeah. so, like, little things like that, like, give you an idea of, like, that kind of a gritty, dark comedy crime story. Uh, but then, so, uh, I would say, like, other directors, like, would be like Scorsese for sure, uh, but yeah, those would be like Coen Brothers, Tarantino, Scorsese, and of course you got to give love to as for like somebody who does it on their own and like just didn't really give a damn about how like the budget when Rob Rodriguez his first movie was a huge influence in getting this made because I basically made this entirely out of my own pocket too. Maybe some people helped me here and there, but no no Kickstarter, no Indiegogo. So that was a huge thing I was thinking in the back of my mind was like okay. If, that guy was able to do it but while shooting on film. I should be able to do this, shooting on digital and just, you know, collecting cans, collecting whatever I can to make extra money to put to the side, you know, anytime I got paid for my jobs. Yeah. Put money to the side. I'm sorry, I, you asked me influences. I'm talking about like fun. That's okay. It's totally interesting. Around. <laughs> That's okay. It's interesting. That's why I'm listening. Was there was there local actors? Uh, I, I think your cameraman was local, right? Um, yes, absolutely. My uh, director of photography, Nick Hilton, who's originally from Bishop, California, um, and oh my, yeah, he made the movie look like a million bucks. I'm like forever in debt for look, which is what he did with this movie. Um, definitely check out his work. It's amazing. Uh, and then there's that. Uh, yeah, and then a few other. Uh, so my camera department uh, is local. One one uh, one of my actors in the film is from Lone Pine here in Hampton. Uh, catering was local, of course. Uh, that was uh, the Lone Star Bistro in Lone Pine. And then a buddy of mine produced it, uh, who's also a local, and he has a small cameo as a background actor. Uh, my assistant director was also local, uh, Jeremy Lee Turner. He's from Independence. So yeah, kind of a blend. Like uh, there's some people from LA that I had worked with before that I was able to call and ask if they were interested in working on the shoot. Uh, other people I pulled from uh, from Owens Valley. So it was it was definitely a blend, a m- meshing mesh, if you will. Of- so I want to be able to say, oh, this is local boy done good and his first thing ever, blah blah. blah. But the truth is, let's be honest here, Manny. You've been on more big movie sets than most movie stars have been on, isn't that right? I mean, if you want to put it that way, sure. But. <laughs> so you've been working in film for many, so. many years. So it's clear where you've got your uh, skills and talents built up from, is what I'm saying. Yeah, well, thank you for that. Yeah, so actually, uh, oddly enough, and I didn't even realize until right now, um, next month will be, it's actually 10 years I did my first set. So it's like, whoa, like, about well, things kind of come full circle in a weird way. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. So you've been on multiple big sets, but if you had to pick a favorite huge movie that you worked on, what was that? Okay, uh, I'll answer in two, <laughs> in two ways, if I may. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, obviously, no question about it. Django Unchained, uh, because again, that was like the d- director who made me want to get into film, who made me want to sit down and put pen to paper to write a script. So, yeah, having a damn out of body experience, I'm watching Christoph Waltz and James Remar and James Russo act, Tarantino over here yelling action cut, and I'm just like, what the hell? Did? <laughs> a year ago, this was not happening. What happened? And uh, yeah, that one I got to be like a uh, production assistant and location i helped with the location scout i wasn't the scout themselves i got to help with that and uh my work as a production assistant was actually pre-production i helped like prepare some of the sets and what have you but they didn't hire me the day or the actual filming uh for what i understand it was because it was a strictly union set uh which i was understandable i mean i i was bummed at the time but actually now working so much in film i I knew I would have probably been killed in a live being on such a big shoot so early on, but uh, no, they got to let me come visit one night, and I was, like I said, I could have died driving home and been happy. Uh, but then a shoot that I got to a big one that was almost like my, as I like to jokingly say, my uh, rite of passage, if you will, was the was Little Lone Ranger, the uh, Dora Polinsky, Johnny Depp, and I don't know if it's a good idea to mention the actor who plays <laughs> Lone Ranger right now because he's, he's in trouble, yeah. but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, you know, the, uh, came out in 2013. That one I did get hired on when they shot in Lone Pine, and I worked the entire time they were there on that. Now, that was a 
grueling like, as a production assistant. I didn't really get to experience like the glamour of it. Yeah, like anytime we broke for lunch, I had to basically take my lunch with me, go to the next set, get prepared. But it basically got me ready and prepared. Like, okay, this is this, this is the big leagues here. These are the big boys. No effing around here. Uh, and so that yeah, that was a lot of fun. So the gun to my head, Django and Chain. But as far as experience and learning things go, definitely Lone Ranger. I'm going to have to ask you to give me back my 10 bucks because I was thinking you were going to say Ace in the Hole by Jesse Steele. So oh. uh, I'm going to take back that money I gave you to plug me. Oh. <sighs> I guess we'll move on to something else. <laughs> uh, well, if you ask me who my favorite director is, then... <laughs> ah, ah, touche. You pulled yourself out of that real well. <laughs> no, but so you've done, you've been working for 10 years now in film, each film gradually getting into a more... Uh, a job with more responsibility, more glamorous positions, hanging out with everybody, you know, that you've been idolizing your whole life. So it makes sense that you've started directing and producing your own films at this point. At one point, did you realize you were going to do that? You know, you've you've been writing for years. Uh, but at what point did you say, you know what, I'm going to direct and produce this movie? Uh, well, directing and producing has definitely always been on my mind. That's always something I've always wanted to do. Um, but, you know, uh, I understood that without having money, I'm not going to be able to do that. No one's going to be like, you know what, kid? We'll take a chance with you. But uh, so I just kind of felt like, okay, I need to just kind of learn learn my craft. I'm not going to be someone crazy and just be like, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go out of my way and direct a big movie. Uh, you know, I don't know a damn thing. So I just kind of absorbed everything I could on every single set I was on like taking mental notes taking physical notes whatever just kind of learning everything uh, I, I didn't really get a chance to go to school due to some personal issues uh, but uh, I think working on sets was a great was almost like my film school so to speak uh, but anyway uh, no I, I, I would probably say like maybe like four or five years ago is when I finally said okay come hell or high water I'm just gonna like I said earlier I'm just gonna put money to the side no matter how broke it, how in debt it puts me, I'm just gonna put money on the side, and I'm gonna make a movie. Damn it! Whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether I have legit actors in it, whether I'm just using you know my uncle Rick to play a role, I don't care. I'm gonna make something and call it a movie. And I definitely wanted to do it by the age of before 30 was my goal. I was aiming for 25, but that did not work out. But anyway, uh, probably like the last couple of years when I legitimately said, okay, I don't care. I'm not listening to anyone. I'm not going to let someone tell me if I'm ready or not. I'm, I'm making something. And just it just took me up until now to finally just like, get in contact with the right people, get, uh, you know, just the right timing. Just took, you know, which is funny because I normally say, don't wait for the right time. Just do it. Uh, don't wait for that grant. Don't wait for circumstances. Just do it. But at the same time, uh, I think waiting so long, it was kind of meant to be like, because like I said, all the other contacts I made that were able to help me on this just worked out perfectly. You kind of led to where I was going from my next question there. What would be your advice for a local kid from the Valley trying to get into film? What, uh, Where should they start? What what direction should they head into? Um, I mean, that's, see, that's, a, that's a tough one in my opinion uh, because it's one of those things where, okay, if they want to go to school, great, just you know, focus on that. Focus on what school you want to go to. You know, learn up what you can now. Go into school. Just pay attention. To everything you can. If you don't want to, if you can't, don't have the means to do that, or if you're like me, where circumstances kind of screwed that up on the way, then get on sets. Whether it's you know, I, I was fortunate enough to live in an area where filming is you know busier than anything else. So, and I got in contact with the film commission. So that was my one way to get on with uh, whether a big, small production. I just got on and basically you know mouth shut ears and eyes open when i was told hey hold up hold up this lockup okay i don't know what the hell this has to do with teaching me about film but it's then eventually you know i'm gonna earn my stripes if you will so okay and then that's tough maybe not the next shoot maybe the one after that i won't be moving up to anything bigger or better but it's gonna eventually lead me in the right direction so yeah, no matter what it is, if someone wants to get in the film, just basically absorb every single thing you can. Don't think you're going to be the director right out the gate, but that's okay. Not no one, no one is out the gate. I don't care who you are, but just get on sets, get on, read, read film literature, read 
you know, watch movies, study, study movies, understand what, what is this shot. If you want to be a director or cinematographer, watch movies, understand what's this scene saying, what's the light, well, why is it lit this way, why is it shot this way, why is it written this way if you want to be a writer. But yeah, okay, uh, for, but again, I'm, I'm probably repeating myself, but pers- personal answer would be just get on as many sets you can, no matter what they are, no matter what they want you to do. Just get on it and just learn everything you can. Absorb as much as you can. Here's something that a lot of people don't know about you. And I actually wrote an article for the the sheet in Mammoth about you, in fact, if you recall, um, about eight years ago at this point. Oh, uh, yeah. So you actually are a prestigious writer, aren't you? You won an award, as I recall, uh, I in mean... the L.A. Film Screenplay Festival. What What was it? Tell us about that. Oh, I mean, you know, up until now, I always thought my mom thought it was special, but I guess, <laughs> what do you know? I think you're special, um, too. Yeah, uh, well, you m- m- make me happy. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> cancel Manuel Ruiz already. Um, anyway, uh, so that, yes, um, that was the, uh, yeah, like you said, the L.A. screenplay competition, um, and it was in 2013, Beverly Hills, uh, <laughs> totally new environment for you know i think i was like 20 at the time and i i needed to show you know the the invite even says you have to be 21 or older i was like the only person to like just write the competition be like yeah problem how the hell am i getting in if i'm not even 21 and i'm sure they went like what the hell you're not 21 kid what the hell are you doing submitting <laughs> trips to us so they're just like okay we'll just have your invite there and uh, they'll get you in okay and uh so yeah i'm the, I'm the nerd like oh i can't get a beer at the bar and, or do coke in the corner with the other people because I'm only 20. Um, <laughs> I don't think you're allowed to do that, even if you're over 20, Manny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's the city. It's film. <laughs> I thought this is what everyone does, right? Uh, I mean, you know, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on for that before I really do get canceled. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, um, so it was this screenplay competition strictly just dedicated towards screenplays, uh, no films being shown or in competition. But anyway, um I submitted a screenplay, a feature screenplay uh, called Lots of Luck in the Valley. That one was, being it was an earlier work of mine, it was heavily influenced by Tarantino, almost to a fault. Uh, But I've been rewriting it over the last couple of years to really make it its own thing now. But anyway, um, so it's like a crime anthology story. Yeah, again, I have have had no classes on writing. Anyone who's read my stuff can attest to that. Yeah, (laughs) but Don Bonnet spelled him. Um, but, uh, so I, I had no writing experience, no nothing, just me in my room writing. That's it. Um, and there was like five places that they were given out after place, you know, third place. I'm just like, Oh, oh, oh well, uh, Hey, it was fun to come here. And sure enough, what did they say? My script, my name for second place. I'm like, what? No, oh, okay. Uh, I, I think this guy read the wrong card, but whatever. Uh, and afterwards, all these people, you know, they want to ask me about my script, you know, they're coming up to me to congratulate me. And someone's like, Oh, oh so, uh, tell us, uh, you're only 20. Uh, well, what, what school are you going to do? Uh, I'm not going to school. Uh, okay. Well, uh, who's your mentor? Who, who's teaching you writing? Nobody. I'm just, I just write. So I like to write. Uh, okay. Kid, you little smart ass. Uh, well, where are you from in LA? I'm, I'm from Lone Pine. Where the hell is that? Who the hell are you guys? Just come in and show us all up. But then they want me to write their scripts. Then I had like people been like, oh, well, I got a script. I think you'd be good for it. You don't even know what my script's about. Yeah, whatever. We'll get to that later. But anyway, guy, when I write my script. So at first I had like people wanting me to write their scripts, but then like a day later, I don't hear back from any of them. And I was like, yeah, I'm interested in this one little synopsis you gave me. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that was a lot of fun. A whole new experience for me. I can tell you that. That's kind of cool. Did that kind of kickstart your whole motion forward in the film industry at that point like getting on big sets and stuff uh i mean it, yes and no uh but it, it got it kind of gave me legitimacy i guess if you will as a writer and someone like to be kind of taken serious not just someone that is seen as like who wants to do this as a hobby or somebody like you know hey i write scripts yeah that's cute whatever guy uh so it, it got me a lot of like legitimacy uh, uh towards other with other people kind of showing that i at least know something in this craft Mm-hmm. And it got me connected with other. Yeah, in some cases, it did get me in contact with people like, uh, uh, like I think uh, that's what actually uh, got you and I uh, working together because I think we were, we were going to work on a anthology script, and you had heard a, or a show rather, and you had heard about that and thought that that would be a good, yep, uh, good local talent to incorporate. Well, I wouldn't go that far. At least you're local, but we, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
just kidding. Okay, awesome. Well, we've gone over 20 minutes now and I intended for like five, but it was interesting. And so I wanted to keep hearing what you were saying. Right. So now we've made a podcast instead of an interview. Um, <laughs> okay, so Manny, is there any place that somebody can get a hold of you if they would like to, to talk about film or to see some of the work you've done or anything like that? Um, at the moment, uh, just my Facebook or my Instagram, uh, both my, just my name, Manuel Ruiz. And, uh, yeah, that's the best place I'd say you'd be able to find any of my stuff until I get a little more organized and established. And okay. And I'll probably have my own website sooner than later. And also for the Eastern Sierra Now fans out there, Manny writes movie reviews pretty much weekly for, uh, for the website. So if you'd like to see any of his work and his takes yeah. on some of these films that have been coming out lately, then definitely give that a look at easternsierranow.com. Manny, thank you for giving us the time, and we wish you the best of luck with all of your film career ahead, and um, everybody needs to head down to the Lone Pine Film Festival and check this out. Thank you for giving us the time there, Manny. Yeah, you bet. As you can tell, uh, Manny and I have had a long history working together. He's a great guy, and he deserves all the accolades he gets for his first short film. It's pretty great. So again, the Lone Pine Film Festival starts October 7th, and it ends October 10th. If you've never been, you have to go. There is so many cool events. They take you out to see all the locations that different movies were shot in, such as Django Unchained, Iron Man, Tremors, everything that's been shot out there, going back to the 20s and 30s uh, with the old westerns that were shot basically every day out there. I mean, Lone Pine was basically built on the film industry. So, But that's a whole other topic for a different day. <laughs> so again, thank you for listening. This has been Jesse Steele with Eastern Sierra Now. And that was filmmaker Manuel Ruiz.